Thank you to all my patrons who supported me throughout my whole YouTube journey. Hey guys, I'm JDDY. I hope today we are here with GO! My favorite sports team! And today we are gonna react to the newest episode of Go. And I did not forget to load it up on my tablet. That would be unprofessional. And I totally didn't forget to do that. It's, it's right here. Yeah, I, I'm not scrolling up to the newest episode. No, why Why would I need to do that? The proof of death. There's a lot of proofs of death. There's like scientific proof and stuff like that. But what does that have to do with sports? Like a proof of death, like when a death happens in sports, like in boxing, because boxing can be pretty dangerous. Or in, um, I think football, that could be pretty dangerous if and you need like proof like if he died or not, which would probably be very obvious. But like, what other ways would you be need a proof of death for? Huh? I'm not sure. But maybe Tyler will know, and maybe he'll tell us all about it, and maybe we will finally get to know it. Does he really have a master's degree in sports and administration, like he says he has? But where is this proof? Where is this piece of paper, Tyler? Where is the paper? I need to know. Yeah, um, also, um, I'm having a little trouble with a movie reaction that I am currently editing. If you want the full length reaction to it, it is called Shazam Fury of the Gods. I just reacted to that yesterday. Having a hard time getting it uploaded. Don't know why, but I am. Um, make sure to check out my Patreon, because that seems like the only place to do it, so... Yeah. Let's get into Go My Fair Sports Team Proof of Death. Elegant listeners Hello. and elegant viewers, and welcome to Hello. Go My Favorite Sports Team, your favorite podcast that exists in the ether of sports. We have merch! Bye bye bye! Store.gmfst. Once I have money, yes, I will, <laughs> I Mark. Like, I saw the finger like rearing back, and I was like, what's about to happen? I was like, is this going to be an aggressive to use? No, no, no. These are. <laughs> oh, you really slipped up last time. You oh. really slipped up last and or the previous time after that, depending on when that episode was. You really goofed it, friend. Mm. I'm sure I did. You dared, you dared to call professional wrestling fake. Because of it. Oh, he doubles down on it. How no. could you? How I, could you? All right, let's talk about a professional wrestling match. First okay. of all, it is scripted. Everybody knows who's going to win within the organization. That's why there's no gambling surrounding it. Secondly, the punches, they don't they don't hit them. There's mics underneath the mat to elevate the sound when they hit the hit the the arena and mat. They do things and they do actual stunts. They are stunt performers who are insanely athletic, and I will never discount the fact that they are athletes by the definition. But pro wrestling is not a sport. It is sports ancillary entertainment. And the impact and the actual results and comp quote unquote competition is not real competition. But here's where the points on the internet that I'm going to co-opt as my own and pretend like I actually know what I'm talking about <laughs> really stick you to the wall. Because Danny Boy XV said, uh, this jacuse goes out to Tyler who had the audacity to call professional wrestling fake. While although it is scripted and match outcomes are predetermined in no way is any of it fake, these athletes legitimately put their bodies on the line for our entertainment. For example, and most famously, when man Mankind nearly died falling through the top of the Hell in a Cell match against The Undertaker, who was also wrestling with a broken foot. And last year when Cody Rhodes fell, went through a full match with a fully torn peck. Just because it's sports entertainment doesn't mean these wrestlers don't risk their well-being on a weekly basis. I mean, everybody risks their well-being every time they hop into a car. 
you're equating hopping into a car for a daily commute to being thrown from the top of a of hell in a cell cage match debatably more people die in car accidents <laughs> i am i wrong am no, i wrong you're That's not wrong being made either way more, peop more people stunt die performers in, in films in traditional sporting events what about stunt performers in films they risk their lives every day that they're doing their job which is exactly what these people are doing but again the stunts are to create the illusion of an effect uh-huh it is not they are not actually punching each other but are they athletes? They are athletes, but that does not mean that it is a professional sport. But is it? No. Because well, the elements of sport are missing because it is not competition. It's scripted. Mm -hmm. It's entertainment. Uh, but what about how all of sports are rigged and all the NFL That's, Super Bowls have been predetermined since 2001? You're right. You know, they totally predicted the the loudest stadium event when Marshawn Lynch ran through like 13 defenders for a touchdown. They totally scripted all of the, the chaos. They scripted um, uh, Tom Brady breaking his knee and Carson Palmer getting getting his knee broken, you know? That's just how deep the rabbit hole goes. It's they, so I, deep. They hand I do, it to him. I kind of get what they're saying because there's such a there's such a negative connotation to calling it fake. And also I think it's highly reductive to equate it to the to the commonplace activity of getting in a car for a commute but because... you're comparing a risk to, of injury by doing an activity and trying to say that that makes it a sport that's not how sport works no i think what they're doing is they're equating it to the idea that the entire purpose of professional wrestling is to get to a point of athleticism that you can perform those things it, it's like if you went to like to your example if you went to a stunt performing ability man, what you do is fake it's not real they would be very offended by that but i'm not i'm saying that the wrestling itself like the aspect of calling it wrestling is not true wrestling mm -hmm. it's and the fact that a lot of the stuff that they do is illusion based because they do not actually impact each other every time they purposely land on their forearms oftentimes when they're doing stuff it's an illusion of the impact it's an illusion of an actual competition it's an illusion of punches those aspects, by being not truly what they are, is by definition fake versus real. Honestly, like, I don't have any stake in the game. I think it's just like, it's kind of the same way that a lot of these things get people up in arms because they get offended because it's like, to dismiss something is to almost insult something for people that care so deeply about it. And it's like, I don't think anybody that watches professional wrestling is in any way under the illusion that it's all super super real it's exciting and there's like oh yeah it's entertainment to follow it's just like i think the issue is with calling it just straight up like it's all fake and therefore um it's one is higher than the other to to be clear i never was putting one above the other the the problem is and the jacuse came about because they called the other form of wrestling amateur which, to a degree, it is, but when you get into the Olympic ranks and actually compete in true wrestling, the actual sport of wrestling, mm -hmm. that is sport. That is when you can become a professional athlete. The problem is a lot of people don't go and watch traditional wrestling matches. It's not a popular sport, especially in the United States. Overseas, there might be places where actual wrestling is a sport. What we call professional wrestling in the U.S., is not a sport it's entertainment that is sports ancillary they are insanely athletic and i respect the hell out of them they are basically stunt performers and actors and so much wrapped into one that can do so many things and the the stunts they do are real just like stunt performers do real stunts but the actual competition in itself is not real but what about the other competition that is a part of it the popularity competition because that is a big determining factor in who is able to succeed in that field. And so I would say like the argument is made that they are professional athletes and professional competitors in that sense, 
the sport overall is more encompassing than just what takes place in there because there's all the drama that actually takes place behind the scenes who's top dog who's actually gets why does someone get predetermined to win is because they're more popular or because it could create more drama if they lose and it's like that sometimes is against the athlete's choices and it's it's all to do with like their ability to cultivate their own persona and perform so there is an element of competition there i would say to a degree i I mean that's performative competition that's that's a little bit different than because more often than not has less to do with their ability in the ring and more to do with what they can do outside the ring almost like they're judged i'm well, audience audience based judge it does not, not fall into the same same it's category the, the the official the officials behind the scenes they have to they're judged by a panel of officials that determine their worth and value of their performance Mm, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's about of, viewership it's entirely of. about viewership not entirely sometimes you can sway uh people in charge with your charm and wit and people believe in you because you're chutzpah either way it is not a sport but is it fake i will still say that it's fake in the sense of saying that if it you use the word wrestling mm -hmm. it is not real wrestling and if something is not real a synonym <laughs> to not real is fake uh-huh well there's better ones to use i suppose anyway uh you also didn't mention the major score change after the salt lake city olympics of 2002 for figure skating i don't know what that means informal analyst 459 said that what do you say about that oh i didn't dive deep enough into figure skating to get more analytical oh well <laughs> judge scoring is so complicated that it it just throws everything through a loop and trying to explain how they do the scoring system is so overly complicated. That's what a fake podcast host would say. I'm an imposter. Yes, exactly. All right. Jacuzzi is over. Uh, oh, uh, all right. That's fair. That's fair. We are today going to be deciding the fate of Tyler's education. Um, it, the I, fate I, I of talk, it, is it dying? Yeah, I talked to the school board. They said it's all good. If you fail this test, they will revoke your master's degree. Uh, and then you will have all knowledge of sports burned from your mind. That sounds horrible for the success of this podcast. <laughs> yes. Well, you, know, you could learn it all again. You just got to hurry before the next episode. <laughs> I'll find the, um, do you remember like, uh, what was it? Um, no, it was uh, Futurama. They had the little, like, book gummies. <laughs> yeah, book gummies? <laughs> yeah, they'd, like, eat the books, oh, and then they'd right. absorb the knowledge of everything right. in that book. <laughs> Man, that would be awesome if that was possible. Right? Uh, first off, tell me what, what school did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, undergrad, I went to Wilmington, and for uh, grad school, I went to University of Northern Colorado. University of Northern Colorado. Uh, I hope they have a list of their courses. I, I, so, um, I actually sent you. <laughs> oh, you sent me! Perfect! You sent me the recipe of your demise! <laughs> oh. I sent it through Discord, though, so. Alright, well, that's, that's, that's boring. And boo! <laughs> Sports administration so the way this episode is going to work is i'm going to grill tyler on various sports information and also to make sure that he actually took the classes that he says he took yeah. in order to be able to get whatever the hell he has <laughs> in order to get that disease that he caught there for sport yeah all the stds he got at university of northern colorado the sports he, transmitted Oregon. diseases <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, that's not funny. You're not you funny. just started laughing. You think you're funny, you're not funny. They don't even say what the classes are. What kind of what kind of school is this? Is this it's, even a real school? You have to dig through. Um, when I, I, the reason I wanna. went there is they were considered the number three in the world um, for the uh, program. Couldn't go to the number one one. Wasn't good enough, I see how it was. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> What is the number one? Uh, Ohio University in Athens. Mm, okay, all right. Well, then you would have had to been in Athens. I would have had. Who been wants to be there? That's ridiculous. That's, you ever just... that's where jo Joe Burrow is from. <laughs> oh, never mind. It's great. We all love Athens. <laughs> Do you ever just forget that Toledo exists? 
no. We were talking about Ohio on Distractable, and I was like, I always forget that Toledo's in Ohio. I was thinking that Toledo is somewhere else. What makes you think of Toledo to begin with? Exactly, right? Exactly. What makes you think of Toledo? Nothing. Nothing makes you think of Toledo. I mean, the only time I think of them is when I see their team in a competition. <laughs> That's they it. Have a team? Yeah. Is there a school there? Yeah. They're, they're Toledo. <laughs> All right, whatever. Okay, so it's time for the quiz. Are you ready? I'm to always lose ready. My your master. master. I wasn't done. Oh, let's go continue. Well, it's not as, not as dramatic now. No, it can be more dramatic. Will adds epic music. Build the anticipation. Mark, go. Are you ready to lose your master's degree? No, because I'm not going to lose it. All right, fair enough. He's very confident. Okay, so. If you really did go to this supposed college and get a, a supposed master's degree, in May 2003, the fastest known speeding ticket in U.S. history was handed out, with a Swedish sports car allegedly going 242 miles an hour in a 75 mile an hour zone. In what state did this occur? 75 miles an hour. I mean, fast. I'm just going to say Colorado. <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> Wrong! Wrong! I don't know why this is a sports related. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, a speeding ticket? Was it part of the Cannonball Run? Uh, might have been, actually, yeah. The Cannonball Run is like that competition to go across the U.S. as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. It took place in Texas. Oh, of course it would be Texas. Which, I guess if you could have just guessed if it was a Cannonball Run, which state is the largest and, like, has the most... But the like, Cannonball open. Run wouldn't have them go through Texas. No? No, because it's east coast to west coast. And the fastest track would not bring you south. Oh, I did not know that. I did not know that. Unless you, unless you can hit 242 in Texas, apparently. Uh, but that's, okay, that's a point against Tyler that is not looking good for him having a master's degree by the end of this. And we do have a time limit on this episode because I ordered food just before it. And as we said in the last episode, we are limited on time. And as you can tell, we're, we look exactly the same as we yeah. did in that episode. So you, the mystery is, did we record it that day or do we just always wear the same clothes like cartoon characters? Post-production, change the color of my shirt. <laughs> Don't ask Will to do that. <laughs> it's just like the few <laughs> sliders starts a rainbow. Like, I just picture him putting the word different color. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see these amazing edits that Will is doing and we are subjecting him to, go to Spotify to watch the episodes. And be sure to follow. <laughs> or follow. Or follow, yeah. And follow. And, and click the video friends. thing. Because the video yeah. is exclusive over there. Exclusive to Spotify. Yeah. All right, next question. Arguably the second most popular in the world after soccer, what lucky sport has defensive positions named gully, silly mid off, and deep mid wicket? He got it right, everybody! <laughs> yeah, even I could have guessed this one. <laughs> when they said on silly, it's very obvious. Silly mid off and deep mid wicket. I was like, that's got to be cricket. But also, people... also, it's soccer, cricket. And then I think after that, in the tier of sports, because there was a while that I knew it was probably probably American football. Oh, huh, really? Yeah. It's just it still blows my mind that baseball isn't higher up because I know so many Asian countries love baseball. Japan and Korea love baseball, and I bet there's a few others there. But across the world, like I guess Europe doesn't play it very much, and they do account for a lot of the world. But you know, I just would have thought. Yeah. Isn't basketball also taken off? Oh, bas office? basketball is the third one. I was wrong. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I knew that before you did. I get the point. Yeah, That's well, another... <laughs> well, what's after basketball? Because uh, it's not American football. Baseball. It's golf. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Remember, everything's on the line here. All right, everything. My life. Turkish? Is it? All right, his life is now on the line for this. He, If he doesn't get enough, to, he'll lose his master's degree and his life. So you'll die, and then along with your body, your master's degree will be incinerated. Oh, nice. 
At least you know. <laughs> at least you know our friendship is close enough that you knew I wanted to be cremated. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, I was pretty sure. I was pretty sure. Anyway, Turkish-born athlete and activist Enes Kanter legally changed his name to Enes Kanter Freedom in 2021 to celebrate his American citizenship. Mr. Freedom has played what sport for Turkey's Fenerbahce Batsi Sports Club as well as the Jazz, Knicks, and Thunder? Basketball. Yeah, I feel like those last parts of it really gave that question away. The, the thing <laughs> is, you could have you could have you could have skipped those last part, and I would have known. Uh, you know of Turkey's no. Fenerbahce? No, but my my estimated guess, based on the name, would be basketball, uh, based on popularity in sports and the fact that he yeah. came to the U.S. Because for the other sports that are highly popular, the U.S. is not where you would go. Cricket would be the U.K. That makes total sense. And Cricket would, would be actually, be it would, yeah, it'd be U.K. or India. Those are the two. Uh, ah, that right. makes sense. All right, you get a point for that. Okay. But it's only going to get harder from here. Outside of what sports venue would you find Rise Up, the world's largest freestanding sculpture of a bird? All right, so you, you've got the Falcons, you've got Arizona, you've got the Eagles, you've got the Hawks. Rise Up. I'm going to say the Eagles. The Eagles Stadium, Philadelphia. So close, but no! It's the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, oh, it is home the of the Atlanta Falcons, you were very close. You were very close because you didn't know all of the bird teams. So that was the, the hint you get there. But no, it looks like you might be burning in, tonight. In all fairness, I have a, I have family in Atlanta, and I have yet to go to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So I haven't you been You would have seen the bird. You missed Atlanta class in your degree. Yeah. You know? I guess you didn't really go. <laughs> you know... <laughs> I didn't go to Georgia for my master's degree. I went to Colorado. You want to know what uh, sculptures in Colorado? What? What? The demonic horse that stands by the Denver airport that, believe it or not, actually killed the person who created it. It fell on him and murdered him while he was trying to put it up. I don't think that's murder. Well, it murdered him. It was intentional. The thing's evil. All right. That's fair. I have seen that from the airport, and it is very scary. I don't know why it was like that. All right, next that. question. Are you ready? I am yes. always ready. The run for the roses and the fastest two minutes in sports are both colloquial names for a horse race that occurs on the first Saturday of May in which U.S. state? First Saturday in May. It's a it's amongst the three races, which is the Kentucky Derby, the Belmont Stakes, and the other one that its name is escaping me. But the run for the roses, to me, I'm going to say Kentucky. That is absolutely correct! It is, in fact, Kentucky. I don't know why I get any kind of ego, but like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because the Run of the Roses is, is uh, commonplace to be called with the Kentucky Derby, so. <laughs> All right, well, well done. Okay, uh, there, are, there are literally 290 questions on this, and they go from... <laughs> I wonder how many I would get right if we went through 290. We're not going to now because we're on a time crunch, guys. When Mark's food gets there, we're done. You're right. Man, these these are easy. Even I would know these. I'm going to scroll down a bit. To it's the, because you're learning, more. Mark. It's because I taught you things. You know, actually, it probably is. There are a few of these that I'm like, yeah, I know that because of from that episode or, or whatever that is. Here's one. I don't know if this will be too difficult. What was the gate moniker given to the 2014-2015 NFL scandal in which the New England Patriots were accused of manipulating the air pressure of football? It's a flight gate. <laughs> uh, which is a total lie. Tom Brady would never, <laughs> would never disgrace the name of sports to do such a thing. I reject this question. This is awful. I mean, I can I can tell you the other gates that are involved in the three gates of the NFL that I can name offhand that happened in our lifetime. Spygate was the New England Patriots. They were spying using cameras to film uh, other teams' defensive signals when they're giving signals for what play was going to be called by the defense. And then there is Bounty Gate, which was the New, uh, the New Orleans Saints, where they were headhunting and getting paid to injure other players or attempt to injure other players. Well, you don't get bonus points for any of that, so <laughs> that's nuts to you. <laughs> All right. The Owls are the sports teams of what public Philadelphia university? Owls. They're called the Owls. Is it Penn? Penn University? It is not. Oh, what is it? It is Temple 
Oh God, I forgot that was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, you you should feel bad. <laughs> Wait, where is the other I one? <laughs> what? Penn is isn't that? Penn is in Where's Pennsylvania. Penn? My uncle went oh, to Penn, okay. and he's gonna shame me for this because he played football for Penn. Yeah, that's not gonna be good for you, man. It really There's, doesn't the seem problem like is, good. The problem is, I immediately knew I was wrong because they're the Quakers. Uh, because it's the, it's a my school in undergrad was also the Quakers, and we talked about it multiple times between me and my uncle. So right when I said Penn, I was like, no. Man, you really should have known that one. Then that's pretty embarrassing. Oh, that's that pretty hurts. embarrassing. All right, scrolling down. Uh, boo, what? Okay, so this is a Cincinnati-related one, I think. Okay. The quote, and this one belongs to the Reds, was the catchphrase of what sportscaster who called Reds games from 1974 to 2019? 2019? Yes. Not Marty Brenneman, is it? It is, in fact, Marty Brenneman! I got it right! <laughs> the, the 2019 right. was the key thing, so... Yeah, Marty Brenneman... Was that the same guy that got in trouble? Yes. <laughs> That's why I was like, mm, what, 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 yeah, he said, uh, he was on a hot mic and he said some horrible things. I can't remember what it was, but, uh, probably best that I don't remember that. Yeah. He used a, <laughs> he used a derogatory term towards a certain group of people. Oh, good. <laughs> That's great. So That's good great. thing he lost his job, but man, I, it's so, it's so funny that that's the only reason that I also know of that name. Yeah. <laughs> hey. All right. This one's, some of these are like ridiculously easy. I'm not asking you this one, but it's like in a football game, what's it called when a player loses control of the ball? When they, <laughs> oh, the they have a chance to score. The football. You don't get a point for that. <laughs> I'm going down. Okay. Ooh, here's an interesting one. Okay. Paul Allen. An American billionaire who passed away in 2018 was the owner of the Portland Trailblazers, Seattle Seahawks, and a part owner of the Seattle Sounders. Before entering the world of sports ownership, Allen was best known for co-founding what company? And this, this might be difficult, but I'll give you a hint. Remember, the Seattle Seahawks and the Seattle Sounders. So think of a Seattle-based company. Ah, damn, that would that would have been a good one, but no, it was actually Microsoft. Ah, uh, okay. Microsoft was founded in Seattle. I yeah. know that, but you don't get a point for that. Well, Seattle and founding the company, I was like, ah, oh, that, that would make sense. Mm. That's so ancillary. That's so, like, an arbitrary trivia question. That, that is, sports. like, a very tangent. I think that's the only way I'm going to get you on any of these, if I, if I tackle it from a, a different point. Yeah, way. I, I don't study billionaires. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have billionaire class in your business administration. No, I would think that as you're learning how to be a part of the uh, cog in the machine of business administration, uh, that you would know who your superiors were. No, we talked about moral and ethical reasoning in sport. We talked about facilities and event management. We talked about marketing and promotion around sport. Okay, those you actually were. I have another list of classes. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, you did name a few of them, but you could have just pulled up that from the same Google search. I got nothing right here. Legal aspects of sport or sport law, those are both in the same category. There's sport and exercise science. I got science. nothing right here either for those listening. I'm holding up both my hands, but I also know organizational behavior in sports, sports marketing, human resource <laughs> management, sports organizations, legal issues in sports. Wow, there's nothing in my hand. <laughs> here, I'll share my screen. I can do that. No, no, don't do that. All your tabs of porn. I don't want to see <laughs> that, yeah. All right, uh, next question. What tough furry orange mascot swung into his first appearance at a Philadelphia Flyers home game on a giant wrecking ball? Philadelphia Flyers mascot. Tough and orange. Furry orange mascot. God, I can picture this. It's weird. I, I, I can picture this occurring. I'm just going to say Bailey on, because for whatever reason that popped into my head. Do you have any other name? I do not. Uh, it's gritty. Gritty. Oh. Which I never in a million years would have gotten, but you as a master's degree owner should have known. <laughs> yes, I study all of the mascots that are created to entice kids to want to come to sports events. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like clowns. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, okay, next one. This is going to be a real toughie. 
As part of the growing boom of sports cards, a rookie year signed Tom Brady football card <laughs> sold at auction for more than $1.3 million in early 2021. What team was Tom Brady on during his rookie year? The New England Patriots. That is correct! <laughs> I was like, I thought you were going to ask me about some <laughs> random stat that was on the card and I would have been like, God, dang. No, no, these are too easy for that. But if there's one thing we've proven, it's that Tyler knows everything no. about Tom Brady. I he... figured there was some underlying reason for this, the deflate gate to the Tom Brady what? question. No, these are just the quiz questions that I'm randomly scrolling to and then finding. Okay, <laughs> all right. I, I can tell you the reason why fences are around pools, and it has to do with my education. So it's something called an attractive what? nuisance. A what? An attractive nuisance. Attractive it basically nuisance. means if you have something that can be dangerous, that's a kid walking by would be like, ooh, I want to go do that. If you don't have a fence around it and somebody gets injured or dies in it, you are liable. And that's part of legal aspects of sport. Interesting. But that doesn't prove a thing. How would anybody at home know that that's related to that degree you supposedly have? You're right. I could no have one. just called Bob because of his law degree. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. He, he, he's he, he, that's not proven either. I'll quiz him on law <laughs> trivia in a moment. Just you wait for that. All right. Also, the name of Swarthmore College's sports teams. What deep red silicate mineral is the birthstone for January? <laughs> And <laughs> I have another supplement in if you can't no, get no, it. No, 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 no. It's garnet. Hey! There you go. Because that's my like, birthstone. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, it would be. That's right, yeah. I was like, maybe you know. I wouldn't know the name of that stone off the top of my head, but the other part of this was the mineral is also a homophone with a basketball turned actor. <laughs> basketballer turned actor. Uh, garnet. Mm -hmm. Garnet. Okay. Although his historical reputation is marred by steroids, what alliterative man remains the MLB's all-time home run leader? Barry Bonds. Correct! That's another point! So yeah, that was, I didn't give a celebration about the Garnett one, but who cares if you get points? It's not really that exciting. <laughs> doesn't prove anything. This isn't distractible. We don't get points here. Points are arbitrary, yeah. unnecessary. Yeah, this is a judgment. I'm going to make a, a, a judgment based on how I feel at the end of this, not necessarily whether you earned it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Definitely not if you earned it. <laughs> All right, here's another Reds-related question. Okay. Name the controversial Cincinnati Reds player and manager who was penalized with permanent ineligibility for baseball. That, that is correct! What <laughs> fucking question, Tyler? Uh, he was a major part of the Big Red Machine, um, which had Ken Griffey Sr. on it. And believe it or not, the Cincinnati Reds are still paying Ken Griffey Jr. for his contract with the Reds, and he has since re been retired for, I think, a decade now. How does that work? The way the contract was structured to make it so that it didn't hit all of the money right away. They just paid him out long term, which is, as a person, an individual, that's how I'd structure it. I'd want to get paid out way after I'm done with my career. It makes sense to me. All right. Well, we'll see if you're going to get paid out in fire after this question. Arthur Blank, co-founder of the Home Depot and owner of the Atlanta Falcons, owns one other sports franchise. What is that sport? And I have a hint. If well, you what were it. the ones that he owns? He owned the Atlanta Falcon and co-founded the Home Depot. Okay. Home Depot, Atlanta Falcons. I'm get, uh, My guess, I'm leaning towards... I'll take you the want hint. A hint. I want the hint, but I'm leaning towards okay. it. Okay. The franchise was founded in 2014. 2014? Well, it's not football. It's not another football team. The NBA is relatively recent, but probably not that, maybe. It's probably hockey. Final answer? I think it's hockey. It is not hockey it is soccer oh yeah i don't know what the name of the team is but it just says soccer it's probably the so, the georgia based one that i can't think of i don't know i don't know anything about anything why ask me i only read the questions and then pretend like i'm smarter wait than you. if that 
that question wasn't even didn't even give you the answer. It did, yeah, it did. It said it was soccer. It just said what what the what other sport? Oh, it, it should name the team. They should make it over. They even they don't know is is not possible. Twenty fourteen because I was getting down the lines and I was like hockey or soccer because hockey moved south recently. So mm-hmm. okay, next question. In what sports league do the Minnesota Lynx play? Minnesota Lynx. Is it professional lacrosse? It is not professional lacrosse. It is the WNBA. Oh, God. You heard it here first. Tyler doesn't respect women. No, that is not. (laughs) (laughs) I don't watch the NBA. You could have quizzed me on some of the NBA uh, NBA teams, and I want to know who what they are. Look, I just scroll, and I just... That's a tough one. one. I guess if if you knew, like, teams in the NBA, you might have an idea about it but yeah i would never have been able to guess that links i guess uh, what is the one there is it the timberwolves is that where they are i don't know i don't know i have no idea i just read them <laughs> all right here here is a not necessarily sports related question but something you might know because you're an adventurous person hmm. in what no i got you would not know this at all in what georgia county <laughs> county <laughs> Would you find a starting point or ending point for the Appalachian Trail? Oh, God. <laughs> the county? Yeah, no, this, this feels unfair. Yeah, this feels unfair. Man, I don't even know all the Ohio counties. Yeah, I, I, I barely know the two that I was part of. It's not. I only know Alameda. It's not the city. It's north. That's the only one I know. Does it start in Marietta? Is Marietta a county? It might be. It, in but Sacramento, it's not Sacramento's the right a county. Answer, unfortunately. So you don't get a point for that, you pathetic <laughs> loser. No! I'm not a loser. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll discount that one. No, but I want to know what the county is. It's called Fannin County. Fannin, okay. F A N N I N County. I was curious if you would know it because I, I don't know if you're a trailblazer, but even trailblazers might not know where it is. I've the read is. like I've read a book on the Appalachian Trail, but mm-hmm. I don't think it mentions the county. It mentions like yeah. the town, and that was years ago. Alright. Well, we're getting down to the last few questions because my food is almost here. Alright. So we're gonna we're gonna ask you something that you definitely know nothing about because you don't care about it. The first, tenth and 20th editions of Wrestlemania were all held at what iconic East Coast sports and concert venue? I know. Oh my God. I know. I know. Not so fake now, is it? Not so fake. Not so fake now, huh? East Coast. East East Coast. Coast. So it's on a coastal city. Mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden. That is correct. My garden, my garden, it's in my garden. I guess he does care a little bit about professional wrestling the realest wrestling there could possibly be i had to remember that new york was east coast it is on the coast it's i it's, geography my brain gets boggled when i'm thinking about it if i see a map it's easy i can name the states but when it comes to thinking about it in my head it gets discombobulated All right, well, here's something to discombobulate you. In 1996, Nike created the ACG line of products, which markets for extreme sports such as snowboarding and mountain biking. What does ACG stand for? ACG. I think G stands for games? Alternative competitive games. (laughs) No. (laughs) All conditions gear. Ah, dang! (laughs) Hey, mine was interesting. Uh, I guess you took a different route from snowboarding and mountain biking, but not quite there. Not quite there. All right, next question. Since you seem to know a little bit more about the sport than maybe you, I think you do, the Bridgeport Sound Tigers and the Hartford Wolf Pack are both professional sports franchises based in Connecticut that compete in what sport? Lacrosse. <laughs> Why do you keep saying lacrosse? I don't know. I don't know the answer. <laughs> it's hockey. Oh, damn. It's hockey. Professional sports franchise. Are there professional hockey there, lacrosse? There fans? was for a while. I don't know if it still exists. Yeah. Let me see. If hockey it's is hockey. Silly, silly, silly. Wait, what were the names of the teams again? <laughs> the Bridgeport Sound Tigers and Hartford Wolfpack. Idiot. How could you not know that? Are they in the NHL? Uh, I don't know. It must be, I guess. All right. We're going into a different world. 
Because he, an ardent StarCraft fan, in 2021, Shopify CEO Tobias Lutke announced that his company had started its own professional esports team, which competes under what name? Is it Cloud9? <laughs> <laughs> no, but the answer is dumb. Uh, it's the Shopify Rebellion. Oh my! <laughs> it's a, it's not, a, not a great name. Not a, I can't say that's a good name. That, that makes it sound like he's telling his team not to use his product that he created. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Okay. Here's one in linguistics. The word forensics comes from a Latin expression meaning of or before. What type of building in reference to where Romans trials were held? That was complex, but let me read that again. The word forensics comes from a Latin expression meaning of or before what type of building in reference to where Roman trials were held. This F word can apply to a place for exchanging ideas or an alternative name for a sports arena i think forum forum is correct it is a forum which i didn't know that that was another name for a sports arena that is a strange thing yeah there's there's a few that have that name in the u.s i can't think of the exact ones but the forum there's places all right we're getting down to the wire. They're almost here, so I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to see what these last questions are and how hard they actually is. I was going to say, just like lightning around me. That's not even... This one isn't even a, an actual trivia question. It's just... I think it's like a riddle more than anything. Okay. Being one of the most popular sports down under, how many points is a goal worth in Australian rules football football? A goal... A goal. I'm gonna say five. So close. It was six. Oh, so it's the same as a touchdown. I couldn't remember if it was or not. Yeah, apparently. I, I don't know what the difference is between a goal and a touchdown is in Australian rules football. Is that still like? Is that like American football, but in Australia? Yeah, it's. There's some similarities and some differences. The ball is different. I think it's like a round ball. If I remember right. This is an interesting question. Upon their establishment in 1902, the Durham Bulls were originally known by what regionally appropriate team name? Um, the Durham Bulls. Uh, Do you movie. know the Durham Bulls? I know I, the Durham I Bulls. Ever... I know the name of the Durham Bulls. Um, I don't think you'll ever get this. Oh, God. There was a time in which I knew this. I'm Can not really? even kidding. Um, because there was no a, there's a video quiz thing for sports trivia that I used to play at my uncle's house. And this was one of the questions, and I don't remember. It's a weird, it's really weird. It's a weird one. Yeah, it is a weird one. <sighs> Nothing's coming to me. It's the tobacconists. Oh, yeah, the, because tobacco. Tobacco. I, I would never, I don't even know what the Durham Bulls are. I don't even know what any of that is. I don't know what sports they play, but I don't have a master's degree, and apparently neither uh, do you. I believe you. it's baseball. Durham Bulls are baseball. All right. I don't believe you. I can't trust anything you say. Yeah, look it up. Here we go. This is a good one for the last one. What American city has occasionally been considered the first purely American city because it was the first city founded after the American Revolution? The city peaked in the late 19th century as the sixth most populous city in the U.S., although it has slipped to the 65th most populous by 2018. What city is it? American Revolution. I have another hint, too. Okay. I'll take but the if hint. you need it. Yeah. The city remains well known because of multiple major sports teams. Started at the 6th in the late 19th century, slipped to the 65th most populous by 2018, and well known for multiple major sports teams. Well, it's not all the way in California, mm -mm. because this is just right after... This is the, the revolution against England, right? Yes, it yeah. was founded. The first American city founded. So it has to be on the East the Coast. Revolution. Boston Boston. existed. Has a lot of teams. Atlanta has a lot of teams. York exists. Yes, it's York exists. There's a lot of places with multiple teams. Los Angeles has a ton of teams, but that's too far west. Yeah, you can pretty much discount anything on that side. Miami? Multiple teams makes me think of multiple teams within the same sport. And I don't know if uh, that's No, the case. different sports. Different sports. Is it called the Queen City? It's not Cincinnati, is it? 
It's a very fine last one. I'm going to say it's Cincinnati. It is Cincinnati! Woo! It is Cincinnati, the first purely American city. Our hometown, still well known for multiple major sports teams. All right. It's also known as the Queen City, which is why I lean towards it, because it was right after the revolution. It is also known as the Queen City. And it is beautiful, and it is lovely, and I craving skyline. No, oh, God. Skyline, but is... I'll have to settle for the food that's almost at my door, which ends this. So, the determination. Do you actually have a master's degree? I mean, my answer is yes. It's not about your answer. That was for the trivia. No, Will, light him on fire. <laughs> no! Yes, I do. Okay, well, I don't think I'm qualified to know what that answer is, and I don't know how any of these trivia questions relate to whether or not you have a master's degree. But you did get quite a few right, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, um, some of there are definitely ones I should have gotten right if I paid attention to like more sports. That's all right. It's all right. But uh, I do want to say, if any of my classmates from getting our master's degrees together, or any of my professors happen to be listening to this podcast. Please hop over to that subreddit and showcase the fact that I did, in fact, walk and get my master's degree. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. It's only there's no evidence. And maybe there will be a picture that suddenly appears of my master's degree in the next few days. Mm, I don't know. It hasn't happened in the past year, so I don't think it'll ever happen again. But remember, we also have merch. Store.gmfsd.com. Why don't you go check that out? We got pins! You can get the Elegant Listener Ultimate Collection. Or you can get the Finger Sports Hat. Or the Finger Foam Finger Finger. Is it foam fingers for sale? It's going to be actual foam very finger. soon. <gasps> Good. If it's not already up. I don't know. So you can finger sports too. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Maybe we'll see you. Hmm? It's a Spotify video. You gotta go watch a Spotify video. <laughs> oh, right, right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Bye. 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 Alrighty, buddies. Um, I had to restart because I messed up. So yeah. Hello, uh, every. Sorry. Um. Uh, yeah. I had to restart all over again. So yay for restarting. Um, but that was interesting. Now we know for certain. No, we don't know for certain that Tyler has a master's degree. But he did answer some questions right, but he didn't answer my garden question. Because I even knew that. And I don't even watch that much of wrestling. I haven't watched wrestling since I was a kid. And I knew that. Because it's my garden. I, I know what happens in my garden. Either it's from sports events to concerts. I knew a couple concerts that happened in my con in my garden. And then I think like some hockey games happened in my game in my in my garden, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah. But Tyler, 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 Tyler. Oh, it says proof or death. Oh, I thought it says proof of death. Oh. oh, well, that's my dyslexia for you, because I thought the episode's name was Proof of Death instead of Proof or Death. The O and the R. It's lowercase. So I was confused. But, Tyler, you gotta show us the picture, bud. Or at least the actual degree. And I need to see it. Since you are on Spotify and that is like a video like type podcast. But, until that day, you have no right to call yourself the king of bald and nose. Until I see that at that degree. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. And please, if you're on, if you go to my Patreon, check out my Shazam, the Fury of the Gods, and what I had to say for that. Make sure to check out my Patreon because that was actually a very good film, and I just put up the poster for it. So yeah. Um, I'll see you guys.